Hey YouTube, welcome to this installment of the Avion Blog. So today we're going to look at another insulation resistance tester. This is the Victor VC60B Plus Digital Insulation Resistance Tester. Um, we're going to take a look at this thing on the bench and see if the voltage outputs are all in place like they should be and how this uh, device performs. So let's get straight down to the bench and take a look. Firstly, this meter comes in a rather unassuming box with no sort of branding on it etc. Uh, just basically says digital insulation tester. Now, when you open it up, you have your meter and your cables in over here. So I'm going to unwrap all this stuff and uh, I'll be right back with you. We can take a look at the actual meter and its construction, etc. Okay, yeah, we have the actual meter. Um, it comes in this sort of hard plastic casing that you'd expect um, of a uh, Chinese build as the Victor. And when you open it up, it's a rather strange clipping mechanism to open up the case unlike the uh, Toptronic stuff etc which actually opens quite nicely but then you have your meter now when you look at the meter layout um, a few things make sense I mean a, a insulation resistance tester is the same no matter which make you look at it they all kind of do the same work so just to give you an idea we're going to go in a little bit closer over here and I'm going to show you guys a few things about this meter so you can see that there's a few things that are exactly the same and there's a few rather large differences and of course a few strange little um, sorts of mislabels if you want to call them that so let's get closer and take a look okay now we're looking a bit closer to the meter so the way this meter functions is I'm going to go through the buttons from this point over here this is your voltage select 250, 500 or 1000 volts so now you have to select which one it is that uh, you want to be testing. So 250 or 500 is, not, is your normal sort of uh, domestic applications here in South Africa. But now where this one differs from some of the stuff from Toptronic and others, uh, where you actually can connect them up before you test the, push the test button, it'll actually give you a voltage reading to tell you that this is live. This one you'd actually have to select 750 volts input. You'd have to do a measurement between these two points over here and then switch your leads to these two points over here to do an insulation resistance test. So that's a bit of a pain. But in so saying, this thing does have a really nice large display, which gives you the information as you can see here. And when you push the test button, the screen actually lights up to tell you that the device is on and you get that little lightning bolt to tell you that it's currently running. So that's quite a nice touch. And like I say, a rather nice uh, large display. It definitely does make for um, nice sort of reading, etc. And so the one thing that commonly crops up is the actual output voltage in DC of these things. So what I'm going to do now is we can actually check them and just see what we're getting. Now we can't go too high with the specific multimeter that's in question over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with 250 volts. As you can see we've got 258 volts on DC over there. And it's telling me that my multimeter is 9.9 .9 mega ohms. Right, so 500 volts, stand clear. And as you can see, we've got 521 volts. And we're still showing 9.9 .9 mega ohms input impedance. Uh, so I take it this is about a 10 mega ohm multimeter. I'm a bit wary to do the 1000 volts because I'm not sure this meter over here could actually handle a 1000 volts considering it shows max 600 volts, so we won't be doing that. But if we had a bigger meter, we could check the 1,000 volts, but I can guarantee you it's going to be well within its spec. So what these guys do is they output a DC voltage onto the connection and then check the resistance um, at that voltage of the cable. It's quite a nice system. It works very well, and it helps you to distinguish if there's any possible problems in the insulation of the cable, etc. Okay, so where does the earth resistance tester or insulation tester come into its own? Let's say, for example, we have a piece of wire, a electrical conductor uh, carrying our mains. I'm just going to grab a piece of wire over here. Um, okay, now I know this piece of wire is more or less intact. Um, this guy over here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put some leads in. To our insulation tester. Now these aren't the type of leads that I like to use, these general multimeter leads, but they do do the job. I prefer using a clamp-on type lead uh, to get my results. So let's move the multimeter out of the way and let's do a nice little resistance test 
insulation resistance test of this electrical cable. Okay, so we probed in over there. We can power up. Right. So we've got it set on 250 volts. I'm going to hit the test button. As we can see, very high impedance, no problems at all. 500 volts. Very high impedance, no problems at all. 1000 volts. Still, the cable is holding up. Now I do notice that this cable is rated for, let's have a look see. Doesn't actually have a rating on it. Um, but yeah, obviously it's handling a thousand volts being pumped into it with no problems at all. So yeah, this cable is definitely good. Now if there were for example a small cut in the cable or something like that that may affect the resistance of the cable, you might not pick it up with the continuity but it might be close enough that when you pump 500 or 1000 volts through the cable it'll show up that uh, as a short, it'll start actually arcing. So then you can tell if there's a problem or if there's liquid damage to cable etc. It's all very useful in the sense of testing that sort of thing to make sure that you don't have any problems with uh, insulation or insulation breakdown on electrical circuits. So yeah, it has its purpose for your electricians. It's also good for testing certain uh, appliances to make sure that there's no sort of earthing issues etc. For example, here we have a metal frame fan. Let's just try and zoom out a little bit more. Let it lock on. We have a metal frame fan. Okay, now we want to check if there's any insulation problems between, let's say for example, the casing, because this one doesn't have an earth, and maybe one of the electrical connections. Then you could power up, 250, test. We've got no contact, okay? Again, we could do it with the second connection. no contact we're good so we have no problems at all over there it's safe to touch this fan body um, use it for compressors testing compressors uh, fridges uh, all sorts of mechanisms like that it is a fantastic piece of equipment to have and i must say it is probably a must have in all electricians toolkits um, and that is the insulation resistance tester but the, mate, the meter in question today is this Victor VC60B+. So what do I think of this meter? Well, besides the very cheap plastic build, I think the meter is practical, it will get the work done. And uh, of course it definitely has its place as a cheap alternative to some of the more expensive insulation resistance testers out there. However, I still prefer my Toptronic um, range of insulation resistance testers and earth resistance testers etc to these Chinese ones. The Toptronic products are made in Taiwan, um, in Japan, so you, well in Taiwan, so you know that the, you're getting a good product, whereas this Victor is a Chinese manufactured product, but in so saying the spec is not bad at all. Um, yeah, all in all, not a bad little insulation resistance tester it will get the job done um, and it's pretty practical for what it is now just a few things to note before we move on the things I don't like about this specific unit is the way this plastic cover clips on I'm not too sure how long that'll hold these plastic clips here will probably break pretty quickly that hold the belt um, so I would be a bit careful with that if I was to buy one of these. Um, the unit does come with a strap which you can install on there. And then lastly, the probes themselves don't look too terrible. Um, they're reasonable for what you spend on them. Um, it says here CAD 3 1000 volts 10 amps. It looks very similar to the type of probes that you would get from Unity or Unitrend. Um, so I'm not too sure how long they would last. It isn't the safety type, but um, look, it'll get the job done. I personally don't like probes on an insulation resistance tester. I prefer clamps, but in so saying, the probes do 
do the job. Uh, when you just want to do a quick test, the thing's hanging on your neck, you take your two probes, you connect them in, push the test button with the other hand. And when I say using one hand, you can actually get two probes in, but it can be a bit awkward at times. And you can basically contact your two points, push your test button and move on. But uh, yeah, all in all, not a bad piece of kit. Um, probably not something I would spend too much money on, but um, if I'm looking for an insulation resistance tester for around between 500 and 1000 bucks, then this is probably something that I would look at getting. So yeah, all in all, not too bad. My review gives it a thumbs up, but um, I wouldn't probably rely on it as my sole meter personally. Um, I'll let you know how things go over time, how the thing stacks up to daily usage, etc. And if any failures, what fails on it as we go. So thanks for watching this brief review of the Victor VC60B Plus insulation tester. Until next time, take care.